Blessed souls, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm the magical medium. Welcome to my spiritual guidance channel. There is so much going on. Mm. So, before you are four piles. Today, we are talking with the whispers of the ocean oracle deck. I can't get in there. I gotta stay tight on that screen, but so that is the deck that we are working with. We are in the Piscean energy. There's so much intense energy. It could, I've been putting this together for hours, for hours. And I'm, you know, it's interesting. I was like, hey, no, wait, wait, I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up. I really wanted to start with letting people just go in and choose their pile, you know. And then I got this vibe from Spirit. They're like, you know what? We'll put timestamps. If, if you notice, the time, time, the time stamps change all of the time. Um, this reading is one of the most beautiful readings I've ever done in my life. I'm in such gratitude to the Whispers of the Ocean Oracle cards, to Angela Hartfield, I believe it says. I don't have my glasses on. I can't see the other part of the creator of the artist, so I give them a, a shout out as well. Um, but it was interesting because when I was connecting with the Piscean energy, Spirit was saying, there is so much respect that needs to be given right now. Because it's not just that, you know, of course, whenever you watch this, it's timeless. But today in real time, it's February 19th, 2022. Thank you, Aquarius. You are awesome. So many lessons, so much joy, anger, pain, frustration, lessons, happiness, gratitude, servitude, lots of tudes. <laughs> um, very grateful. But I'm also really excited for this Pisces energy. I have never connected to the Piscean energy stronger than now. My father was um, a Pisces when he was alive in this form, in this world. Um, and actually, his birthday is February 28th. But I am respecting and honoring. Oh, do you hear that? It must be somebody going by. Did you hear the choo, choo? It sounded like banging. I don't know if it'll pick up for you guys, but it's really quiet in my house, so I know it's not here. That was really interesting. But I feel like the ancestors are here. Like, seriously, I don't, I know I'm all over the place. It's just because there's so much to say. I mean, my notes are all over the place. I was channeling like a motherfucker. I was loving it. It was amazing. I feel like I saw my father, like a deeper side of him. You know, I think, uh, you know, I haven't researched my father's birth chart, but, you know, he was a Pisces, but I don't know what his other signs were. But it's interesting. My father and I are always connected on a really deep level. And I never really understood it until today. You know, I'm a triple Sag, but my moon is in Scorpio. And Scorpios are very, very, very connected to the moon. Um, even though, even though the moon is like representation of the Cancer in the zodiac, and, you know, we all share a lot of, you know, I actually don't get me going there because I don't know as much as other people know. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that this intuition that some of us are just linked to our intuition a little more deeply than others. We all have intuition. We all can do pretty much the same things in terms of connecting with each other, languaging. But just recently, I realized like how different we all really are, but how beautiful that is. And the reason why they didn't want me to just jump to the timestamps right away is because, I mean, you know, the timestamps are there. If you already, well, you know, whatever, like you may never even watch the beginning of these. You may just go straight to the timestamps. You're like, I'm a pro. I don't need to read the beginning or watch the beginning. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, but I also think that there's something really precious about connecting to the energy 
of the divine in not just astrological form, but through, I mean, you know, Neptune is Pisces ruling planet and Neptune's about spirituality. And Pisces, you know, it's interesting, you know, a lot of times we'll go on, oh, I know that sign or I know that energy, you know, my, I just read something where this person was talking about their roommate. If I remember, I'll put a link below. Always look in the description box, you know, not just for the timestamps, but there's lots of fun things in there. Um, almost every reading, there's at least one link that somehow spirit drew us to look at something. Um, but in this respect, I started to realize just how connected everything is. And Pisces have the great gift of having um, profound psychic intuition. They hone into uh, like the subspecies of us all. They can go to the depths. And it's interesting because out of the three water signs, they are the most deep, I believe. Just the energy I'm connecting with them now. Oh my gosh, it's all over my body. Not to mention that right now I'm also um, working with the Apophyllite. So if you don't have an Apophyllite, I highly recommend that you uh, get one. It really helps us connect to our higher self and our intuition. So, ooh, I, I almost want to not put it in focus. Look at the fairy magic happening right now. This is what I'm talking about. There's just a lot of magic. And I also like that it's a little fuzzy for a minute because it's showing us, right? Like the ocean is deep and murky. And, you know, it's like you have to be able to have like a second sight to be able to go to the depths of those waters, right? Like these sea creatures. That's why some sea creatures live very deep, 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 deep under the sea. And some of them live, you know, in, in and out of the surface. So we're going to talk more about this. Also, I channeled a lot of music and messages from Archangel Michael. Michael and I have been in like close quarantine for like the last 24 hours for real. I can't even like tell you right now. Um, there's just a lot of powerful energy in my house. My partner is also working with spirit through their own meditation process. Um, our uh, familiar is also in a deep sleep of meditation process. So our house is amazing. And the weather's a little spooky outside right now. You know, I live in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so there's just a lot of cool magic. The wind's going, the wind chimes are going. This is a very, 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 very special reading, you guys. So um, I look forward to talking to you in your piles. And so I'm going to start from left to right like I do. We're going to come over here and we're going to start with pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and pile number four. I am going to keep talking. Spirit has a lot of messages for the collective. You should see my notes. I don't even know if I'll be able to read my own writing because I was like trance writing. A lot of cool things have been coming through. So I'm going to do my best to stay in order. I even had to use like different colored pens just so that I can kind of like there was just, you know, it's like there's a method to my madness, right? Um, but for anybody else who, you know, just wants to go look at, you know, their piles, I'll see you over there. I love you so much. All of my information is in the description box below. But yeah, let's get going. Let's talk about these messages from the collective. So yeah, right? So welcome Pisces, the fish, water, flow, emotions. Pisces get to the depth of it. You know, I realized the reason why spirit, um, you know, says that where people, if they just want to go to their pile, they can go, that's fine. But for some of us, you know, we see more, right? Like the more we look at these cards, the more we look at the imagery of the shells before us, which every single shell in front of you, I picked myself. Um, I've actually been spraying them with water so that you can see like their true colors. Spirit did not want me to put any more light on this reading than what's on here now. They really want to just, you know, keep us in this kind of illumination, of course, so that you can see, but also um, in, you know, the murky, in the darkness, right? As the light will change and move around my house, um, you know, also listen to that. Mm. 
maybe it is time for some of you to leave. Maybe you have a Nancy where in, in your pantsy and you're like, I just want to go watch your reading. So do this. Go watch your reading and then come back and watch this because I can feel the antsy too. And I'm just like, go, oh, you're free. It doesn't mean like, you know, like maybe you need to hear that right now. Maybe that's what you're not. Maybe. Thank you, spirit. That's my human languaging. That is, no, they're saying that is your intuition that's telling you, I need to go look at that pile right now. My message is in there right now. And maybe you're done listening to this, or maybe you'll come back to this another day, right? Also, if you're drawn to more than one pile, there's a reason for that too. And maybe you need all the medicine now. Maybe you need it, you know, um, maybe you'll watch this reading a year from now. You know what I mean? And you'll be like, oh, I remember that reading. And you can't remember which pile, but you're drawn to a pile. That's the one, right? So I saw something recently where this gentleman was talking about the fourth dimension was time. And spirits was like, oh, 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 like, don't look at that yet. They wanted me to talk about that today because I think what's happening is, um, don't you think it's interesting? At least I think it's extremely interesting that the last pick a pile that I just, um, posted was the one about the dream state. I'll put it below. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend you go and watch it, but it's so interesting. This is where it's, it's almost like I'm going ass backwards. It's like, it's like, I've always been able to channel, see things, hear things, you know, whatever. I've always loved reading my horoscope and being interested in tarot cards and all the, you know, and mystical and Lord of the Rings and all that. Right. However, astrology was always kind of like, meh. like I just, I just couldn't get into it. It almost felt like school or like, you know, a subject that is like, maybe you're not your favorite and you're just like, I know, but you just like, don't want to learn it. <laughs> it's like, I feel like astrology is so in depth and beautiful and has so many layers that, you know, it's, it's hard to, um, it's like, it's ever changing. Right. So I feel like we are students of life. We are students of treasure, these deep, deep, deep down treasures. And in this next month, in this Piscean energy, I urge you to go the deepest you've ever gone inside of yourself, the deepest you've ever gone with your loved ones, you know, with your animals, just everything where you're like really setting aside, putting the phone down, turning the TV off, turning the music off. Maybe just sitting with the wind outside when you have that quiet, when no one's in the house or everybody's sleeping and it's really peaceful. Taking those moments to connect eye to eye with your pet, to play with your fish on the outside of the fish tank. Also, um, I'm going to put another link below. And this is going to be a big one. I'm telling you, um, the lobster spirit animal came to me. They did not come through these cards. They may be in some of the piles. I have no idea. This is the first time on, in a while um, that spirit actually had me shuffle all the cards for each pile first. So that's really significant right there. But also, uh, I was somehow this cute little lobster came into my orbit called Leona or Leon, Leon. I think it started as Leona, but he figured out that it's a male Leon. But, um, this guy saved this. He was in the um, store getting food and he saw lobster in the tank at the store and it's just something compelled him. He just, he'd always like, he had aquariums, things like that, but something compelled him to rescue this lobster. And the story, I don't want to say anymore, but it's such a beautiful story. And I, I am like, we are, there are so many people invested in this lobster and so many people who've written, like, I love reading the comments, just like how much he's changed people's lives and just, and, and you know, and, and the guy's like, man, I, I didn't realize like something so simple would, you know, affect so many people. And a lot of people are like, this is the way YouTube was when it started. Just a guy sharing his hobby, you know, not trying to make money, not trying to just like, you know, whatever, but people want to give to him and they want to help support Leon and, you know, cause he needed a bigger tank. So he was like, if you guys can help me, you know, kind of thing. And people like sent money, but it's fucking awesome. Right. Cause it's entertainment. That's what it is. It's like, it's Leon TV. So right now I feel like spirit wants us to just, who are we? Let's get to the deep down nitty gritty of it. Who are we? Before this, I went into this trance meditation because the whole beautiful part of this moon cycle, this is the waning gibbous moon. It is the sixth cycle out of the eight cycles of the moon. And it is actually becoming right now one of my favorites because it's about reflect and release. You know, it's about looking back at like what was and what happened, what worked, what didn't, you know, moving forward with the things that are working and release the things that aren't not holding on to something, releasing it, letting go. And I know that hurts. That went straight into my sacral and my solar plexus, um, my, our chakras. So 
right there for you guys. I felt it. My neck is really tight right now. I know you guys are feeling a lot of anxiety, um, this fear of letting go, but I am telling you in this Pisces energy, let it go. It's also the 12th cycle. This is it. You know, we all throughout the year, we have different energies and different cultures that rest and release on, you know, this new year and these new beginnings and working through these cycles. Beautiful. But a month ago, we had Chinese New Year, right? But now it's like we are in, or I should say it wasn't a month ago because it's the 19th, but 19 days ago, we had the new lunar year, right? So now we're gearing up for another new because at the end of this Piscean cycle, we will have Aries. At the end of the water, we will have fire. And it is also not just a fire sign or the sign of the south of Archangel Michael. Thank you, brother. But also, Aries is the very first sign of the zodiac. Not only that, <laughs> but as of right now, we're a month away from spring or fall depending on, I know that we have our beloved family in the Southern Hemisphere. We have Northern and Southern Hemisphere in this group, you guys. It's so cool. You know, that really like shows me how much we're tied together. And even this, right? Like the oceans can't keep us apart, no matter how far apart we are above the equator, below the equator. Oh, you guys, we just need to embrace this energy. So in the Piscean, beautiful Piscean energy, let go of that which no longer serves you. You know, um, so many musical messages came through and I'm going to piece them together like a beautiful woven piece of thread. I'm going to take my magical needle and sew it all together somehow. Um, but and I'm going to follow the breadcrumbs of all of these notes because <laughs> there are many. There are many. <laughs> look, at, look at this. It's so fun, right? So I'm going to pull this all together for you. But the very first song, even though it wasn't the first one I heard, the very first song that wants to represent itself as the Piscean energy is Gwen Stefani in the band No Doubt from the album Tragic Kingdom, Don't Speak. And I will put a link below, right? She's, she's saying, don't speak. I know just what you're saying, right? She's like, she's saying like, don't hear it. Don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to. And you know what? The Piscean energy is, I don't want to deal with confrontation. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to do. No, I just want to live in my own little bubble, my own little ocean under the sea. I just want to be under the sea, right? But at the same time, sometimes we have to look at stuff, right? So also in the Piscean energy, the Piscean energy is easily swayed. And we are, we are leaders. We are in a tribe. And we're going to get more to that. But spirits just have me kind of go through. I'm going to kind of go through. I'm going to say some things. Some things will tie back together wherever they tie back together. But the other thing is Piscean's non-confrontational, right? A little insecure. The interesting thing about Pisces are, in my experience, they're insecure, yet they're like one of the most gifted, talented, creative signs of the Zodiac. If you have Piscean strong in your chart, you probably are an artist of some kind. If not during this Piscean energy, oh, tap into your artist. Spirit is like, <laughs> you know, I'm feeling like I'm channeling Sheldon Cooper, right? Like, you know, oh, please do just like tap into that energy, that really spacious, awesome, fluent. I wonder if Sheldon's a Pisces. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> Because it's like coming at me so strong. You don't even know. It's like, I'm like, what, Sheldon? I don't even know if Gwen, St maybe Gwen Stefani is too. I don't, I have no idea. But um, anyway, I've just been getting this kind of like Jesus vibe and um, this, we're going to talk more. I don't know if we're going to talk more on this particular um, episode, but we're going to talk more. Oh, when I looked down, it was 1919. Oh, oh, which actually, if you put the nines, like, right, it's like, um, we're going into that cancer too. So there's a water energy there. My hands are shaking really, really strong. You guys, there's some energies that are coming through. It's like the cancer energy is looping. Like it's almost like, I feel like for some of you guys, if you are in this energy, cancer and Pisces, it, there's a loop that's going on that needs to stop. 
And um, this is a direct message. So this is either for one person, for multiple people, or maybe this is just them speaking to you. I'm literally channeling like channeling like hardcore right now. Um, but the insecurity thing has got to just be done. And no more going back into your shell, little crabs, you know, um, this is your time. Water signs, water signs, water signs. So Scorpio too, myself, like my Scorpio moon, anybody else, if you've got, um, you know, any of these water signs in your chart, especially if they're in your moon, um, um, there's an energy here, Grandma Rose. So I don't know if this is going to hit for anybody really, really strong or Grandma and Roses. It's something like that. It came in and went really quickly. Witchy Grandma. I'm hearing Magical Grandma, like someone who like maybe like your parents, you know, hush, hush your maybe I, I'm getting this like your parents wanted you to really hit the books. But you had like this grandma who was like, no, go play, go play, go play or like snuck you candy or something like that. Like, a, um, oh, did we just watch something recently like a Nona or a Noni, you know, um, that kind of thing where um, Gammy, you know, like kind of like pet names really close with your grandmother. She's coming through really strong saying, no, 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 no. You need to really channel this water energy. Some of you um, I'm feeling a fire energy. Uh, I'm not going to say which pile, but one of the piles, I will say this, two piles were so loud. It was like, wow. And one pile was like so, so fiery that um, if you were really drawn to a certain pile, I'll, I'm curious. Um, I'll say it when I get to the pile because <laughs> it's been talking to me ever since. But it's been interesting because it was like the water like you're allowing the water to put your fire out and spirit saying, but you have this ability like Jesus walks on water energy, right? It's like Jesus and the fish. Like, you know, there's like they use the fish symbol for Jesus. It's kind of like that too. It's like, you know, they used and abused Jesus. They have been using and abusing Jesus imagery. They're having me go to the cards now. Um, and for so many, Ooh, when I looked down, it was 22. That's really significant. Also, by the way, you guys, um, 222 2022 it's wherever you live um but where i live it's on tuesday right um i mean does it work like that cuz i'm trying to think i'm like we go 24 hours you know but you know what i'm saying it's so wherever you live february 22nd is such a big one like think about it when will we ever ever see the dates like that i'm i wouldn't be surprised if people are getting married on that day or having some type of like you know ceremony or something a betrothal um i just feel like this kind of like union right because it's like two 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 but it's also about duality but when we add it together so february is two and then 22 so two four six right and then 2022 is also six and you add them together it's 12 which is also the number three um, so there's a lot of power, um, the Trinity, you know, all that. There's just a lot happening. Triple spiral. I've been having so many downloads with and talking to um, Michael and the creator and just, you know, how much fakery with religion and control and government and just like some powerful shit's going to be coming through you guys. I'm going to be, I'm going to be getting real with these readings and, and really channeling from the Palladians to the Arcturians, whoever, you know, wants to speak through me. Um, but right now we are focusing on this Piscean energy because, you know, we have to give it some respect. It's the last sign of the Zodiac, you know, and, you know, they're also the most uh, empathic of all of us. Even if you are an empath, it's like if you're an empath and you're a Pisces, wow, like, you know, so you're hitting like this trifecta, talk about threes. So take some time. When I look down, I heard 2352. So if that angel number resonated with you, I always say to take notes. Um, maybe I'll put another little disclaimer to remind you guys to maybe take some notes during this. Um, also, we, the, uh, Angel number 1155 came through again. So uh, if that is taunting you in a good way, check it out or a bad way, right? If you're like, I don't, I don't need it or whatever, but then you start seeing it everywhere <laughs> and that spirit's like, well, it's coming for you anyway. So better just go look it up. Um, but yeah, so in this reflect and release energy, empaths, you know, we know what it's like to take in other people's emotions, but we have to learn how to release it and let it go. 24, 34. So when I call it numbers like that, that's angel numbers. That's for you to go into whatever search engine you like and you research them. So, um, oh, I just heard Darcy. 
So I don't know if that means anything for anybody, but I just got the chills because that is not what this says right here. But for some reason, I saw it as Darcy. But this is intense. Yeah, I mean, Pisces are pretty intense people. And also Spirit wants me to comment that like, I know several Pisces and they are very alike in some ways, but they are very different in other ways. So don't generalize somebody by their sign. You know, um, like for myself, I'm like, I'm, I, I, I tick all the boxes because of the, you know, strongest of the signs that make us up, our makeup, right? Our soul chemistry makeup three of them, I'm fire, I'm Sagittarius. So yeah, I'm going to fall in line with like more of like a Sagittarian nature, right? That's why I made myself that way to be like almost like an embodiment of Sagittarius. However, I made my moon in Scorpio, right? For whatever reason, I mean, I can go on and on. So it's the same for you. It's the same for other people. You know, like now more than ever, I want to know like what my dad was because I've known so many Pisces like him because I was like, oh, I used to think all Pisces are narcissists, all Pisces are this and all Pisces are that. And it's like, no, it's not true. I mean, there's a lot of depth to Pisces energy, to all of our energies. We all have great depth. So, I mean, even here, look at this with pile two. It's like they're digging down deep. I love how like over here, pile one's like jumping out of the water and they're like, and then they're, they're like, yay. And they're like, kind of maybe done diving back in. Right. And then the walrus are like, you know, no, I'm going to stay a little close to the, to the land. You know, I like the water and all, but like, I, I want to be able to get the fuck out <laughs> if I need to. And over here, we've got these fish. Hello, Pisces. I mean, come on. I'm, I'm not kidding you. I don't even know if I've ever even seen that card before. I mean, this is where spirit is just so beautiful and divine and amazing. So um, I am going to break down some songs that channeled through and maybe we'll put them together as a puzzle. And maybe, just maybe, spirit's having us put them. I think they are this way. So I like that. Because maybe has been coming in a lot and I'm, I don't consider myself a maybe person, but I don't know. In this energy, I was listening to music all morning and afternoon getting ready for this. And Spirit was having me like write notes down during it. So every single thing I say represents some type of music that came through. And let me preface this by telling you that Christmas music was weaving its way in. All It was crazy. My phone's on shuffle, but I mean, it's not Christmas time. It's not, I mean, you know what I mean? Besides, Michael already told me, like confirmed to me yesterday that he does talk to me through music. Almost every single song I ever hear has some type of meaning, even if it's just for me to dip and dance or for me to go do something or, you know what I mean? Or just to rest, right? Because he'll put on like some meditation that's like an hour long, you know, and I could be cleaning, but I'm like in cleaning meditation. So anyway, here we go. Oh, they're having me go this way. Okay, this is so fun. Okay, so Breaking Dawn, A Thousand Years, Time in a Bottle, Anonymous, River of Dreams, Fairy Rings, Faith, Ceremonials, Shake It Out, The Visit Between the Shadows, Send My Love to You, <clears throat> throat chakra, throat chakra, work with your throat chakra. This is getting somebody right now. I think somebody's getting emotional. You're starting to feel it, right? You're channeling it. You're feeling the energy, right? Sometimes it's all the messages. Maybe it's just a few. All right, we're going to continue. Ancient grace. Listen to the music. Solo. The soothing source. All through the night. Forever in blue jeans. Traditional, people disappear all the time, surreal, solitudes, ancient muse, gentle winds of love, native spirit, dreams, essentials, mountain stream, heart of glass, and that's amore, <laughs> which means that's love. I mean, come on, you guys, like it's so much fun. So also, um, the, the coolest thing that really tied this all together for me was when I realized that the pick a pile reading, now this comes full circle, right? That I started to talk about at the beginning. 
the, the last pick a pile I did when I told you guys that I've been going in and out of these dream states and dimensions and starting to understand like that time doesn't exist. And, you know, when that guy was like, the fourth dimension is time. I'm not saying he's wrong. If that's what he believes, that's fine. But what I think spirit was saying, at least to me in my level of consciousness, was that there is no time. There is no real fourth dimension, fifth dimension. It, it's all blocks. It's all part of us. We can go into all different worlds anytime we want. We've been, so many people have been tethered to this world that, you know, they're drugged up. They take drugs to go to sleep. They take drugs to wake up, whether it's through food, through substances, addictions, whatever it is. But we've been so mixed up and so mixed around. Our heads have been fucked with for centuries Religion isn't real. It is literally, literally created by man. I'm just putting it out there. That's another thing we're going to go deep diving into at some point. But I realized so many things and I'm, I'm just finally feel free to speak my truth. 3055, which is also number 13, because I'm a witch and I didn't come here to be quiet. I'm a healer and a leader for myself and others. I didn't come here to be quiet. I came here to lead. That's my job. Hmm. 3110, the number five, change and transformation. So that reading, that pick a pile reading that I just did for the dream state, like what is my actual dream state or whatever, I realized I'm like, how beautiful that I wasn't even putting together that, yes, spirit had me do that. Like I, I shot it on the 15th. I think I put the 14th. I got to change that. I shot it on the 15th, right before the full moon. However, I mean, it was almost like a premonition in a way of like the Piscean energy, right? Because the Piscean energy is all about the dream state. It's all about going deeper. That's why it's connected to the fish that can go deep, deep, deep down dark. And I said to my partner, I was like, I was going through my decks. I'm like, I don't, I don't have any decks that like would connect with Piscean energy. I'm like, I don't think I have any decks. That, and then it was like, my whispers of the ocean deck was like, hello. <laughs> I'm like, like, hello. I'm like, oh my gosh. But it was kind of funny and kind of cute. But at the same time, this was the thing that really got me was in this article that I saw, which by the way, there were birds everywhere all around grounding us and protecting our energy right now. Um, also, it's interesting that my partner is working with the tree and the, or the plant spirits right now heavily, and I'm working with everybody, but like predominantly in the water energy of Pisces. So it's kind of cool. He's land and I'm sea. <laughs> We're always in this kind of like cool yin and yang and I. It's very interesting. Okay. So think about this for a second. Pisces' biggest gift is having the intuition the fortitude, the soul knowledge, the deep down nitty gritty knowing of breaking down barriers between people, dreams, and reality. So that, my friends, is, ooh, and I looked down, it was 3311, ooh, which is also number eight. <laughs> I'm just so excited. Um, also, I, I'm not going to tell you, but when you go to the piles, you'll see. But it's interesting how the numbers on the cards all aligned, too. I mean, it was just, like, beautiful. So with that being said, use this Piscean energy to break down your barriers between other people. Ooh, and I look down, it's 33, 33. I mean, come on. I'm, like, trying to look at my book, and I feel like someone's, like, pulling my face. I can't even explain to you how much they use my, like, tug at me sometimes, right? But they're gracious. Pisceans are gracious because when they're in their true nature, right, the Piscean energy itself is gracious. And they're extremely emotionally sensitive and extremely emotionally unaware. That's why they can be taken advantage of. They can be easily swayed. You know, they're like, ooh, that's pretty. Ooh, pretty, right? Just like the sun dances on the water, like these lights are dancing on this reading, right? It's easily to be like, oh, pretty, sparkly. That's why spirit had me bring the glitter in, right? But it's okay to have the glitter and be sparkly and have fun. But don't let anyone steal your magic, steal your thunder. It is time to take your power back. It's time to dig deep into this Piscean energy. Find your creative juices. Let them flow. Be yourself. Let it go. Just be yourself. This is my, my biggest thing. You know, the Pisceans are also the mystics. 
So Spirit wanted me to talk about that and not forget that they are linked to Neptune, spirituality. But yeah, they are the most creative, artistic, artistic and imaginative energy. Very strong empaths. So, you know, tune into those gifts. What does this last thing say? I can't even read my own writing sometimes. So this says, I keep seeing Darcy. I don't even, this is funny when I write things down and I'm like, I don't even remember writing shit sometimes. I don't know. I guess it doesn't mean anything. If it means something, it'll mean for like one of the piles or something like that. So those are our messages from the collective. I know it was a long one, but it is, you know, it's, it's just saying, Hey, thank you so much to, we're, we're thanking the planets. We're thanking the spirits. We're thanking the collective energy of the Zodiac and saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is our culmination. The 12th sign of the Zodiac. We are in the 12th house. This is the 12th house, right? Which also comes out to the number three. I mean, I can't. <laughs> There's just a lot of, lot of awesomeness happening. So don't forget February 22nd, 2022. Even if you have to work, just make it a special day for yourself. If you know, make yourself a special lunch, take yourself out for a walk or something, you know, if you're in that, if not, if you can't take the day off, pull your kids out of school, you know, do something fun, you know, go outside of your comfort zone, do something creative, feel the Piscean energy. Cause the truth is they're also very emotional and it's time to let shit go. Cry, 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 let it out, let it out, let it out. All right, you guys, I love you so much. All of my information is in the description box below. If you'd like to contribute to this channel, I am in gratitude always. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you over at your pile. Blessed be. Oh, did I? Oh, I didn't say my little thing. Spirit goes, <laughs> Spirit's so funny. They're like, no, you have to say it like you say it. Okay, so I'll see. I love you so much. I'll see you over at your pile. All my information is in the description box below. And I'll see you at your pile. Blessed be. Oh, <laughs> bye. Welcome, Pile One. Wow, there were so many energies. You guys, oh, you guys are so blessed, honestly. Honestly, honestly. So I was going to pull the other cards back, and they were like, no, they had me arrange them exactly like that, too. Um, I have the chills throughout my body. Also, 3711 came through, angel number 3711. If you want to take notes, I highly recommend you, you know, get pen and paper, or you can always, you know, just come back and um, come back to the video or maybe mark down a timestamp or something. But uh, there's a lot of messages that are coming through right away. First of all, the card says shared inspiration number 20. And isn't it interesting if you watch the um, messages from Spirit before this, we spoke about the number two a lot. So I'm going to bring it up too as well. So just in case you didn't watch it, this and whenever you watch this it's timeless of course but if you're watching it in real time i want you to be able to really enjoy this energy you can always call on the energy at any time but it is fun to be in it at the time and what i'm talking about is the two energy um that is in february coming up on february 22nd 2022 we will never in our lifetime ever see something where the all across the board for the um <laughs> for the date are twos I mean, that's pretty incredible. So, um, you know, I even said to some of the other piles, I'm like, I don't care if you play hooky, you know what I mean? Or if you get your, you know, you and your significant other, or your friends, or you, you know, I mean, obviously you need to be an adult to make decisions. You shouldn't be on here anyway. Um, if you're under the age of 18, you know, but obviously you are here to make your own decisions, but shared inspiration, right? There's three in this imagery. There's three in this imagery, but it is the number two. So this could be about you and your family, uh, the shared inspiration. But I'm going to get back to that because spirits, we're really getting ahead of ourselves here. But as far as the um, doing something on that day, do something really special for yourself um, or with your family, friends, you know, whatever. And if you have to work, then try and make it a day that's like super special for everybody at work and draw attention to it. Because the more we draw attention to that energy, the more we realize like twos are a really beautiful number. And 2022 is a six year and, you know, six are, sixes are, are, you know, coming right after that hardship of the five. Right. And there's always like those kind of like in between, you know, people are like, we have those in between years. Well, it makes sense because the numbers are like that, right? You know, some numbers we have like a higher vibration than others. Some of them, it's not that it's a low vibration, so to speak, but it's just, it's that energy is there in place for us to learn something, grow from something, you know, 
kind of have a shared experience and a shared inspiration. So this says, let me get it in here so you guys can see. Here, I'm going to go forward. Actually, I'm going to put that back and bring this here because I think there's better lighting this way. Okay, so throw yourself into a new project. Be willing to let go of time constraints and rules and really be aware of whatever fulfills your heart. Yes, what fulfills your heart? Not because you have to. What do you want to do or what are you not doing that you want to? And that could be multiple things. I mean, that could be multiple, multiple things there. So let's see here. I'm going to go to the book because Spirit asked me to read from the book today. I love this author. So it says, this is an action-oriented time. You may feel incredibly inspired and enthusiastic about pursuing a new idea or project. You may feel all keyed up and ready to go. Use your creative energy and passion to take the first steps to get your project on track. Express your artistic self. What are you wanting more of in your life? You are presently in a time of invention, new dimensions, curiosity, trust, and playfulness. Play is an essential part of the dolphin's way of life. Like the dolphin, be open, breathe, and stay in harmony with your surroundings. Balance your daily life and let go of stress. Bottlenose dolphins, like all dolphins, enjoy mingling and frolicking. Dolphins will play with small objects, such as a leaf or a bit of seaweed, catching it on their nose or fin. They play with other members of their family or pod, chasing each other in a flurry of spins and spirals. In this way, dolphins show you the importance of being present and in the moment. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? I'm going to highlight that a little bit. Mother dolphins will nurse their young for up to two years. This emphasizes the importance of surrounding yourself with those whom you cherish. Sometimes being immersed in the energy of family members or a close group of friends can be vital to a creative endeavor. Whether they are like-minded individuals or playing the devil's advocate, trust that there is much to be gained from sharing your ideas with someone who has proven their belief and support of your vision. And that's the vital key component because you're going to have some people who act like they're supporting you, but they're actually saying they're, you know, maybe using languaging or energy that they don't think you're going to do it, or they don't think you're going to succeed at it. So you're feeding off that energy, especially if you're an empath, right? And you know, the Pisces, we were talking about that. They're the most empathetic sign. And if you're in this energy, if you have any strong empath energies, which I believe that you do, um, because also dolphins have like a radar, like a sonar, right? Like they can just, they just know they can like feel the energy, you know, like if some kid's drowning or something's happening, it's like, they can feel that in the water and they're like, bam. And they will go and they'll be like, you know, hold on to my fin. I'll take you to, you know what I mean? It's like they're, they, they have that energy. And so you also have that sonar energy. That's really powerful. Um, but make sure you, you know, don't share all your ideas with people because, you know, some people around you will support you and some are just going to be the naysayers and some are just jealous. And I know that's an ugly, gross emotion, but it's true and it's real and it's here. And especially now, right now, some of us are rising above. And, you know, if we look over here, some of us are taking the plunge, but not in a good way, right? Some of us are swimming in the dark and some of us are illuminated, right? So look at how, see how, I love how they had me do this. But see how it's like, you know, you got these beautiful, gentle creatures back here, the walrus, right? They're, they're, they got your back. They're illuminating you. They're, they're supporting you, right? And even like they had me move this before, but I'm going to move this back here. It's like, right, you've got the fairy energy. The sparkles wanted to come in, the ocean, the water, this Piscean energy. Dig deep. This came into the, you know, reading for the collective, but if you um, are so inclined to get yourself an apophyllite, and if you have one now, make sure you work with it. Make sure you're cleansing it too, taking good care of it. Apophyllite is really good for intuition. And if you're drawn to any other piles, I'm not going to say which one, but one of them, um, you know, I felt a real, real deep um, intuition vibe. So if you are drawn to that pile, then go and watch that pile as well. There's probably some little pearls in there for you as well. I feel like the apophyllite's like, talking to some of you in like light language so there we go oh look at that it looks like little eyes in there do you see that you see that you see that that's awesome 
Okay, so, and it is, it's like, it's like that spirit saying, look at, we got your back everywhere. You've got all around you. Just be mindful of the murky ones, you know, and keep them at bay. You don't have to have people in your life that you don't want them to be there. But going back to the beginning, this action-oriented time, yes, the Piscean nature, it's its kind of a dichotomy. Ooh, when I looked down, it was 44, 55. Um, it's, it's kind of a dichotomy of energy, right? Because on one hand, the Pisceans can be very insecure and very non-confrontational. And they're like, oh, I just want to be, you know, almost like in that cancer energy. I just want to be in my shell, you know, back into that, go back into the ocean. Don't want to be a landlubber anymore, you know? Um, but at the same time, I'm also feeling like for you guys you know, this is the time for you to really hone your creative gifts and your skills. And anything that you've been thinking about, this is the time to do it. And maybe the shared inspiration is like from friends, from family, you know, it's it talked about throwing yourself into a brand new project and being willing to, you know, let go of time constraints and rules around that project, you know, and being aware of what fulfills your heart. That is what they're saying. This is a time for you to dig deep in the Piscean energy. This isn't about who our parents and our family told us that we were, who are work people. You know, a lot of us have become so programmed over the years. We don't know who the fuck we are. We don't know which way to turn. And the only way to find that is to go deep diving into, you know, into new depths, right? Going diving deep into new depths, in a new territory, going deep within. So use that Piscean energy. It's like, it's, I mean, think about it. The Piscean energy is just so amazing. And you know what's interesting? I, I've been putting this for all the other piles, and this is the only, or this, um, for these readings, I've been putting this, but this one, they didn't want it to go in, I guess, because I put it on the side and I forgot. But I'm thinking with you guys, though, working with these moon phases, working with the cycle of the moon, right now in real time while I'm doing this, we're in the waning gibbous, right? And then we're going to have the third quarter moon. But right now, we are in the sixth cycle so focus on where you are right now. And no matter when you watch this, it's timeless. But spirit wants you to start honing in more in the moon energy. Moon's all about intuition. Okay. So let's see. You pulled some other cards too. I'm kind of excited to see what other... Oh! Oh, I, I tell you, I have these, I, I don't remember these. I don't, I don't remember this card. I just don't remember this card. Look at this. It almost looks like a dog. Doesn't it almost look like a dog's face? Like, ruff, ruff, like does these look like dog ears, <laughs> but it's not. It says, be sure you are using your time. Oh, wait, let me get in here. Hold on. I lost the light. I want to get it back. Okay. Be sure you are using your time in the best possible manner. You might consider reviewing your goals, your schedule, or a project you are working on. All could use some fine tuning. Yes. So if you lost yourself, you know, maybe you lost your, you're like, what happened? I used to be so into this or I used to be so into that. And they're like, yeah, well, get back into it. No one says like, there's no time frame. You know what I mean? It's not like you're missing out. It's just every year we're given chances and choices during these big astrological boosts in nature. You know, we get these chances to work on ourselves. It's up to us. You know, that's what I've really been getting with the astrology. You know, before I used to follow the astrology more like a, oh shit, I better not go outside on that day or I better bring an umbrella, you know, that kind of thing. But now I'm starting to think of, now that I've been working with the moon cycles so intensely, I've realized like how important it all goes together. The moon cycles, the planets, the stars, the universe in general, just like how we really are one and we are tied, you know, and it's like, and who's to say there isn't another world or a planet right there inside of there or here on this card or, you know, I mean, it's just to look so far beyond anything that we've ever encountered in our lives. And, you know, we're having breakthroughs and, 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 um, we're, facing challenges the way we've never faced them before <clears throat> if we're in our medicine right if we're working with spirit in the way that they want us to work with it i'm actually going to pull this back right now because i want your focus to stay there this one too okay so let's 
here from number 39, which is also the number 12, which is interesting because um, 2 is a derivative of 12, but not only that, but 12 is the number 3. So 2, 3, like keep going, like changes, 2 and 3 is 5, like keep going. And this says, um, I'm going to read, they want me to read it again. Be sure you're using your time in the best possible manner. You might consider reviewing your goals, your schedule, or a project you are working on. All could use some fine tuning. You may benefit from reorganizing you, oh, here we go. So you may benefit from reorganizing. Initially, getting organized takes some time, but once you have put things in place, you will find that life becomes more efficient. Look at restructuring your routine, your commitments, or your home or work environment. Approach your life, activities, and goals in a methodical manner, and you will find you will feel less overwhelmed and anxious. You may feel more in control of your day-to-day -day activities. The belief of not having enough time is a limiting thought pattern Reframe your thinking to include, include the idea that you have more than enough time. Yeah, like this is seriously mind over matter. If you didn't watch the reading for the collective after this, go back and watch it because they talked about that. Spirit was talking about that, like how time isn't real. And it's again, it's just this like man-made construct to, you know, turn us into this slave planet, you know, for outside forces that aren't really supposed to be here. Now they're here for a purpose, right? They're here for um, whatever, but they don't want to go. And we're like, you gotta go. This was in the contract. This is in the soul contract. And just like anything, the light can grow stronger and the dark can grow stronger. So right now, see how this has the balance right there? I mean, seriously, you've got the light on the right and you've got the dark on the left. If we were going to put it in that perspective, right? So back on task. And I love how actually they put that card before your first card, you know, because they're saying get back on task and throw yourself into that new project, right? Like whatever that is for you, it's different for everybody. So they're having me continue. We're going to pick up in a minute on that other part. So the belief of not having enough time is a limiting thought pattern. Reframe your thinking to include the idea that you have more than enough time. Fine tune how you approach your day. Try to anticipate what you will need prior to needing it. Utilize the evening hours to your benefit. So for some of you, if you're night owls and you're like, oh, I can't sleep. If they're saying for all the time and energy that you're trying to sleep, you could be putting that energy into working on your art project or get off your phone, get off the TV, get off, you know, whatever. And like, you know, put some music on if that helps you get back on task or maybe you work better in like a silent environment. And if you work in a house or if you live in a household where, you know, uh, you have other people sleeping, put your headphones on. Then you can put your music as loud as you want. You know what I mean? Like then you could just kind of be in your own world, even if it's for an hour, you know, and for the writers out there, I watched something recently. And one of the best pieces of advice Salinger ever gave a fellow writer was to write every day for 15 minutes. Even if it's just like, um, writing in a journal, even if it's just talking about your day, even if it's just writing, but eventually, you know, you'll get into the habit of, yeah, maybe you'll journal for the day, but maybe you'll write a, a book. Maybe you'll write a poem. Maybe you'll write a song, right? Maybe you'll just write. Maybe you'll do channeled writing. Channeled writing is really cool. Sometimes I like to get super stoned and just like put on like, you know, kind of meditational music with no words, just like energy music. And then I'll just like get my pen and my notebook and I'll just write. And I'll go back and I'll read shit and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, what the fuck? And it's really cool. Like sometimes it rhymes and it's a poem and sometimes it's just, you know, like nonsense in a way. But then when I read it all together, it's like, wow, that's really deep. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. Like, you know, channeled messages come in all shapes and sizes. Okay. So if you use the nighttime to prepare for the next day, also they're saying because if you, it says you may find you are able to think more clearly with less distractions and interruptions than during the day. Use the nighttime to prepare for the next day. You will be able to share any epiphanies with others after you are able to develop them. So maybe that's a message for somebody, but I also feel like the first thing before I said that is for somebody else, right? Because not everybody wants to share everything. That's why some writers are the way they are. Like they don't like to go on book tours. They don't want to talk to people. They just want to write. They're like, thank you for loving these books, but like, you know, that's my gift to you, but I don't really want to talk to you. It doesn't make them an asshole because they don't want to talk to their fans. It's like, you know, maybe they're just here to, you know, channel something. So it says the squid is nocturnal and it sustains itself by finding what is hidden. The squid teaches greater adapt adaptability in situations and the value of concealment until the moment is right. 
yeah, so maybe the project that you're working on, you know, they're saying you got to get back on task, but maybe you need to redo it. I've reorganized and re I've done so many rewrite. I started a novel three years ago, exactly this month. And I have done so many rewrites that I could have put out three novels by now. No joke. But it doesn't matter, right? Because it's not ready. And sometimes it's, you know, you may work on something for a long time. It may be a week, it may be a month, it could be years. So, you know, don't put all of your eggs into one basket for one thing. Work on multiple things. A lot of writers actually, and not just writers, artists, a lot of people who work in that kind of energy, scientists, whatever, they'll work on multiple projects at once, right? They're not always studying just string theory or just studying, you know, um, you know, painting or, you know, whatever, or writing. It's like sometimes they're doing like multiple things at once. So spirit saying the same for you. By the way, I didn't say what that was because I'm like, is it an octopus? Or is it a squid? I couldn't really tell. It's so cool. Let's see if I can get in a little bit closer. <laughs> right? I was like, what are you? I was like, I don't know. It's so cool though. But it does kind of remind me of a dog, <clears throat> right? If you look at it like that, doesn't it look like a dog? So maybe this means something to you guys about a dog. Also, maybe you were trying to, you know, get a dog. And so spirit's like, cool, we'll get back on task and your dog will come, you know? Okay. So the squid is nocturnal. We read that. Um, da, 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 da. This, they told me to read it again. The squid is nocturnal and it sustains itself by finding what is hidden. The squid teaches greater adapt adaptability in situations and the value of concealment until the moment is right. You may need to bring balance to your life and focus on your emotions, right? Piscean energy. Look at how you are using your time. If you want to feel more accomplished and fulfilled, adjust your habits and routines. Waking up five minutes earlier or limiting the amount of time you spend on social media can really make a difference in creating the space for you to complete more of what you desire. Also, Bubba just jumped in. And so any of those who know are familiar, Bubba the Great. <laughs> Bubba kitty cat. <laughs> Chee -chee. She says hello. Okay, so those are our messages from that. Let's get to it. You still have more cards, you guys. These are very long, intense readings. Just, I, I don't know if it's going to break up or not. So hold on. Hold on. Also, they like me to point out that this whole reading is about what we need to reflect on and what we need to release. So whatever wasn't working in your, you know, whatever was happening, it could also be that maybe it's because you need somebody to help you. Sometimes just telling somebody something. Recently, I rewrote a, a, com rewrote a complete different part of my book. I completely started over, but in a really cool way. And I wanted to read some of it to my partner. And I was like, hey, can I read this to you? Can I read you a chapter and just like tell you, you know, see, see I just want some feedback. And it was so nice to get their feedback. Not only did they help me, but they also like found a little hole in the story that I hadn't like sewn together yet that I was like, oh, dude, thank you so much. You know, like, thank you so much. So, you know, let people help you. Sometimes we just need that little nudge. Maybe it's just going to coffee with a friend and, you know, you're an artist, but, you know, something they'll say or do, you'll create a masterpiece, you know, from like an imagery or, you know what I mean? Okay. So the next one is distinctive potential the narwhal oh my gosh so it says i'm going to bring it a little bit closer rely on your faith and the knowledge that nothing is impossible use your determination to hang in there and re until wait sorry guys rely on your faith and the knowledge that nothing is impossible Use your determination to hang in there until you realize a goal. So we're going to go in here. And I think it's interesting, like we're kind of having this duality, right? With like the reflect and the, and the release. Because also this one flipped over and I feel like we're meant to talk about both of these at the same time. So number 48, disengage from outcomes. Let go so you can open yourself to the highest love that you deserve. Find ways to release worry or any unresolved lack of forgiveness you might be holding on to. Wow, right? So this is what you need to let go of is, you know, what you think should happen or what you want to happen instead of just letting it be. Spirit is like trying to show you how amazing you are. I almost feel like this wants to go in front of here right now. Because you need to dig down deep. That's why I was like, what? They're showing, see? You need to go deep dive on this one. You need to disengage from the outcome. 
Let go so you can open yourself to the highest love that you deserve. Find ways to release worry or any unresolved lack of forgiveness you might be holding on to. That's number 48, which is also number 12, which is number three. What was the Norwal? 23, number five. Yep, change and transformation. So we can come back here now. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Hold on. Okay, so if you feel you have overreacted, take time to forgive yourself and allow yourself to learn from the situation. If someone else has hurt you, be willing to forgive him or her. Pay attention, or they, pay attention to how you are feeling, what you are thinking, and what you desire. Take care to align your thoughts and words to attract your heart's desires. You can conquer any pain that comes your way. Understand how pain can help you grow. If someone has betrayed you, and you do not think you can ever love again, challenge that belief. Do not be surprised when your heart emerges from darkness, capable of loving even more than before. If you are feeling edgy, adjust your diet, your sleep, or your environment. You will be back to the truth of who you are in no time. Surround yourself with family or friends to help you release any old pain and distract you while you heal and wait for fresh energy to rise within you. Orcas develop a social structure based on living with their mothers for the duration of their lives. These pods are formed with the oldest female and her daughters and sons and the offspring of her daughters and so on. Orcas may live for up to 90 years, so several generations of the mammals stay together hunting and traveling. These pods are very secure. They seldom stray from each other, and if they do, it is only for a short time. It is equally important for you to find a strong support system for yourself. Surround yourself with individuals who support you and allow you to grow and evolve as you learn about yourself. And remember at the beginning of this reading was like that. This is really coming full circle for you guys. And I also want to say that, you know, um, I don't know if you were part of or watched the reading that we did um, at the beginning of the month in the new moon and spirit called this um, new moon and the year of 22 was self-care, but also February was um animal free February and sugar free February. So my partner and I, for the most part, we've had honey, but we um, were vegan. And so we've had no animal products and very limited honey, very tiny, tiny, limited. Um, and we've had no sugar. We've had no refined sugar. We've only had natural sugars. We, I've been cooking almost every single, I think I have cooked every meal we've had. And it's just amazing, like how different I feel, how better I look. I mean, I seriously look like I'm 10 years younger. It's unbelievable. And, and to top that off, my partner said to me the other day, you are so much lighter. I don't remember I'm paraphrasing, but he was just saying that he could tell that I hadn't had that food in my body because I was so much sweeter. Like I was just basically kinder. I was more calm. So yeah. So if you're feeling edgy, your diet can be, you know, your sleep patterns, all that stuff, your environment, the people that you're around, all of that. And if you're living in a fantasy of how you think things should be like when this happens, I'll be happy. Or when that happens, that's bullshit. That's always bullshit. And, and I cannot tell you how many times I said that to myself throughout my life. If this happened, I'd be happy. If this happened, I'd be happy. Well, you know what? Six years ago, the things that I've said over the last six years about living in a tiny home with my partner and our familiar, I will tell you right now, it is, I am, I am the happiest I've ever been even though it's been difficult, even though it's been hard, even though it's been challenging, even though I wanted this and I wanted that today, right before this, I had this breakthrough that I was like, holy shit. I saw things like in a completely different way. And I realized that a lot of things that I wanted to happen or wanted to bring into fruition, I needed to do so many different things before I'm ever going to get there. And now I'm starting to see how things are falling into, into place and falling into line and what I'm meant to do. Because the truth is, if you build it, they will come but you have to start somewhere and you cannot just put this fantasy out there and not have any type of like what you're going to do to get there. You have to take action now. So use this Piscean energy to help you do that. Okay. So, um, I'm going to read the distinctive potential. Okay. Distinctive potential. Rely on your faith and the knowledge that nothing is impossible. Use your determination to hang in there until you realize a goal. Reflect on your personal values, goals, methods, and what you believe will bring fulfillment and happiness to your life. 
This card foresees a time when you are very clear on where your individual beliefs and principles lie, and you have successfully created a life that is aligned to those standards. Reflecting on strong family values or a sense of self that may have been instilled within you in early life will help you create a fulfilling lifestyle. We all use coping mechanisms to help relieve stress or avoid confrontation. However, over time, these behaviors become outdated and limit your progress. You have worked so hard to create a new normal. Be aware of when you resort to an old pattern that no longer serves you, like withdrawing or closing your heart. Return to a place of quiet strength and resolve. You are closer to your dreams than you realize. The narwhal whales the narwhal whales are unique mammals found in the Arctic. They possess two teeth. The left tooth grows into a spiral horn protruding from the narwhal's mouth. The resulting horn is 7 to 10 feet long. When first sighted in the early 1200s, narwhals were believed to substantiate the fabled unicorn. When a narwhal's tusk was found and washed ashore, they were believed to have magical powers or messages. The fact that something so unusual as the Norwal exists can help you have faith that anything is possible. And also, faith has come in here a few times. And do you remember, or if you didn't watch the messages to this to the tribe, I highly recommend you go and watch that because Spirit talked about, well, we went through a bunch of different songs and things like that, but faith was on there. Like, that's so interesting, you guys. That's really, really, really powerful. Also, I think it's interesting that we have two whales right? So you have two more cards. Let's see which one wants to go first. And then we're going to wrap up your, wrap up your reading. Hold on. Hold on spirit. Okay. So here are your last cards before you. Interestingly enough, the Norwal or one of them was on page. Uh, anyway, it came out to the number five. And I just noticed that the single mindedness, number 14 is the number five and number eight is keeping it in check. So, um, I tried to cover up the walrus in the background. So if you were drawn to the walrus pile, um, I highly suggest you check it out. If you're not, it doesn't mean anything. I think it has to do with you kind of like being like off by yourself and we'll get to that. So they're having me start from the right and the keeping it in check. And it says, let me get it in here for you so you can see it. Pay attention to what is going on around you. You might be moving into something too quickly or missing some important details. Also, I almost read details as death. So you might be missing some important death. And that could be an ego death. That could be, you know what I mean? So it's not necessarily about someone dying. It feels more energetic, like maybe a relationship, you know, ending or something to that effect. And then we have number 14, single-mindedness. They're not having me go to the book yet. And it says, choose your own path and what is best suited to you. And I didn't understand why they wanted me to put them like this, but now look at it. Talk about deep dive, but look at how they're both going towards the same thing. It's like they're both going towards the same thing. So I'm going to, even though I started in on the eight to the 14, I'm going to go 14 and back on the book. Hold on. Okay, so choose your own path and what is best suited to you. You have harnessed your strengths and talents in order to bring about a triumphant outcome to your, to your endeavors. You have managed to get through the drama of the past. You have overcome challenges along the way and are focusing your energies on one goal that will lead to your success. Stay focused. This is your time to shine and to come out on top. Pay attention to what your body is telling you and trust your intuition. Avoid getting too wrapped up in your thoughts. Thinking and rethinking what is going on in your life will only make things unclear, right? Because you're just scattering your brain. It's over. Don't try and go back and be like, what can I, you know, it's one thing if you're, right, if you're going back to something, you're like, what did I miss? Or what could I learn from this? Whatever. But if you're going back to it saying, what could I have done differently? That's not going to help you. It's more about like, what could you learn from the situation? Because you cannot change it. It's over. It's done with. Remember to draw on the strengths and qualities which are uniquely yours. Your own guidance is best. Barracudas are brave and focused opportunists. They rely on speed and the element of surprise and balance work, play, and rest. Barracudas tend to be vast as vicious, excuse me, ooh, vast. They are vast, right? They're very complex creatures. It says barracudas tend to be cast as vicious predators due to their prominent and protruding teeth and large size of their body. 
In truth, the barracuda is more likely curious about divers and other humans they meet. They do not attack unless they feel threatened or if someone is interfering with their quarry. Sometimes we must detach from expectations, criticism, and be prepared to defend our claim to a better future. Yes, don't let someone else's, what they think of you, right? Like that's, that's a good, it's really coming up here. So this is our last message from Spirit for you, pile number one. So pay attention to what's going on around you. You might be moving into something too quickly or missing some important details. By being more aware, you can learn how to be comfortable in your own vulnerability. Pay attention to what is going on. Be sure to evaluate a situation and how it makes you feel. If you're feeling exposed, worried, or vulnerable, consider what is causing you to have these emotions so that you can release them. I mean, come on, right? We're talking about what we need to reflect on and you know, keep and what we need to release and let go. So really powerful pile number one. So it's time to get back into the flow of your life. Make sure you're not trying to control outcomes or what is going on around you. This keeps coming up for you, right? So control, if this is an issue, you know, that's your ego. That's your ego telling you that you know better than yourself. You know better than everybody else. You know better than spirit, right? Instead of just surrendering, what if you just live in the moment? What if you just move and go in the moment and surrender, surrender, surrender. And when your mind goes to controlling, surrender. Last night we watched a movie. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure um, what it was for or why, but I, re I realized, hold on one second. But I realized something is in the movie, this girl is this young woman has a job where or she has a, a life and she's creative for herself where she's micromanaged and controlled. Ironically, her name was Kelly. And those of you who know me, that's my birth name, but I go by Tulula Kelly, Lula Kelly. So it was like very, like very interesting. She was very controlling. And so for New Year's Eve, her friends kind of give her this, like, you know, you know, what do you, what, what's your New Year's resolution? And, and hers was, I'm going to, until my birthday, her birthday was February 8th and it was New Year's Eve. She said, until my birthday, I am not going to say no to anything. I'm going to just say yes. And it's just really beautiful to watch how this person, instead of trying to control everything on their planner or whatever, just how their lives opened up to love and joy and happiness and their dreams finally came true. And I do believe it's a great metaphor. I know they're silly, but those Hallmark movies, I think they're great because they just give us hope that, yes, like we are the bearers of our own story. We are the ones. We can tell ourselves who we are and where we're going. So, so take back the flow of your life. On some level, your intuition is trying to counsel you on this. So pay attention to your dreams to receive more clues. This is not a time for action. Sit back, make some observations, and find out what is happening at the core of the matter. They say they understand that you're confused because they're saying, stop, go. They're saying, take action, and they're saying, don't take action. They're saying, take action on the things that need to take action, right? And when you don't know what to do, do nothing. Don't try to control it, right? It's about you finding the balance of the two. That's the, that's the magic, you guys. That's the medicine here for you. This is not a time for action, right? Sit back, take some, make some observations and find out what is happening at the core of the matter. Ask yourself some basic questions about what you want. Clarifying your intentions may help you reevaluate what you are doing. Sea otters, they live near shore environments. They gather their food from the ocean floor. They prey mostly on sea urchins. They are credited with controlling damage to sea kelp by reducing the number of sea urchins. Sea otters are believed to understand the emotions, the mind, and the subconscious, and they indicate the importance of being receptive to and aware of your own emotions and those of others. Stay tuned in to clearly determine what you want and what you don't want. And those are your messages, beloved pile number one. All of my information is in the description box below. And I'll see you next time. Blessed be. Oh, bye. Welcome pile number two. Oh, I'm really excited to read for you guys. I just got such a beautiful energy. And it's interesting because I got a different energy when I was putting it together. Um, but just now as I was setting it up, I was like, wow. So you guys, I feel like you guys are going to like a whole other level of your gifts, of your intuition. Um, I feel like, you know, in this waning Gibbous energy going into the Pisces energy, you guys are just feeling the flow. You're feeling the energy. Um, it says on here, let me bring it closer so you can get a, 
you want to take a screenshot. And it says, there is a deeper meaning to what is happening. You might be looking at this from the surface and missing what is really going on. Take a moment to pause and breathe. Allow yourself to dive deeper into what is. Ooh, interesting. Nice Freudian slip. Allow yourself to dive deeper into what it is you are feeling about your current situation. So diving to new depths. Interesting. So Spirit wanted me to read from the book today. I love this writer, so I'm very happy to oblige. So it says, you are being asked to make a deeper connection with yourself. Something in your life needs attention, meditation, or a solution. Pay attention to your inner voice to get in touch with your personal truths and to know the wisdom and understand the heartbeat of the universe. You might be asked to embrace the unknown. It is natural to form an initial view of a challenge or situation. Yeah, so I'm getting the vibe that some of you guys are on the precipice of something really new or you know you need to make a change, which is why I think it's interesting how there's like on one side of this card is like kind of like darker and like this side's like more illuminated. And I feel like you're kind of like, you're kind of like the fool in the tarot, right? There's, you don't have a number. You know, like you're, you're a zero basically because you can go between all worlds. But I feel like now is the time for you guys to dive even deeper into your intuition, to go m spend more time alone, especially um, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere. We're in the last month. Whenever you watch this, it's timeless, but we only have one month left of winter. You can always harness the winter energy, of course, but right now it's like, you know, utilize this energy you know, because before you know it, it's spring and people are you're like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. And let's go plant stuff and let's go, you know, like rebirth and all that fun stuff. Right. And then summer and it's like, well, and then it's like fall and then everything starts at whatever. And then it's like back to winter. And a lot of times, you know, people dread winter when actually winter is the time to dive into those new depths, to find more stuff about yourself. You know, if you didn't watch uh, the collective reading before this, I highly recommend you watch it. It was really good. And Spirit spoke about this, using this Piscean energy, you know, for the next cycle. And also that this is the 12th, this is the last, this is the 12th house, right, energy. This is the last uh, rotation of the Zodiac before we start a brand new astrological year, which is in Aries. Um, and that will be in March. So, you know, take this time. That's going to be on March 20th, I think, or 21st, 21st. But, you know, in the spring equinox, it's like we're so close. We're just, we're right around the corner. We're like a month away from, you know, the change. And also for those of us who are in the time change, we spring ahead, we lose an hour. So it's like, take this time and say no. It's funny because <laughs> my other file is all about saying yes and yours is about saying no. <laughs> um, and, it, and that's why, because it's saying you need to take care of yourself, right? There's a deeper meaning to what is happening, whatever it is for each of you, right? That's the first line. And then it says you might be looking at this from the surface and missing what is really going on. So, you know, and maybe you need to take yourself out of it all together. Maybe you're looking at it from the surface, but maybe you don't even need to go deep down into somebody else's shit, right? Because that could be it too. I'm getting that really strong. And it says take a moment to pause and breathe. Yes. Say to yourself, I'm going to take the Piscean energy. I'm going to take this last month of the Zodiac. I'm going to do, you know, whatever I want to do that's good for me. And if that means saying no to everybody, then that's what you got to do, right? So, and allowing yourself to dive deeper into what it is that you are feeling about your current situation. And the current situation is you, because I'm getting from spirit that you don't spend enough time on yourself. You're too worried about everybody else's stuff. You need to stop doing that. So it says you do this instinctively. Oh, it says it is an, it is natural to form an initial view of a challenge or situation. You do this instinctively and without any awareness. However, your first impression may limit your problem solving ability if you do not go beyond it. If you continue to address this situation from your cu current, <laughs> current, wow, blah, blah, blah. Do you ever look at a word like a hundred times and you're like, what is that word? If you continue to address this situation from your current viewpoint, you will see nothing new. Try stepping back and seeing things differently or from a different angle and a new perspective will present itself. On a deeper emotional level, that spontaneous action, the spontaneous actions you have chosen may have caused you to feel unrest in your daily life. I just heard some of you said something or did something you can't take back. They're like, that's right, you can't go back. Like that happened. You can't change it. 
don't dwell on it. Don't live there. And if you were drawn to pile one, I highly suggest you go and check it out. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. Also, there's the glitter is like kind of speaking to me on everything. And I'm feeling of strong fairy energy too. To maybe you can, um, maybe you, you need to apologize to somebody from a playful fairy standpoint. Or, you know, a lot of times too, if you come to somebody, it's one thing if you're just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's like, but sometimes what people really need is, you know, going deep. It says right on there, diving to new depths. Like where it's like you're going deep into the situation and you're saying, I'm sorry, I hurt you. How did I hurt you? Can we, you know, tell me so that I don't hurt you again? You know, opening that realm of communication, even if that's with yourself. If you're giving yourself bad self-talk, you know, imagine if you keep telling yourself how awesome you are, you know. So then it says here, hold on, I got lost. On a deeper emotional level, the spontaneous, okay. So sperm whales dive the deepest of all the whales. They have been recorded at depths greater than 3,200 meters and can remain underwater for a bit longer than an hour. Sperm whales signify, signify. <laughs> what is going on? I feel like you guys speak another language or like maybe you are, um, like I, I've said this many times. I think this is the first time I've ever spoke English in my lifetime. So maybe you need to, maybe your deep dive is like some past life stuff. Cause I'm feeling like a past life energy. And whenever I feel something for myself, it's like, I'm kind of mirroring you back to yourself. So there could be something there that you need to dig. To, ooh, I'm, like, I'm getting chills all over my body. So there's some past life stuff that you need to dig deeper into. That's very interesting. And maybe it is associated with whales too. Even sperm. I mean, like, like, you know, it's like, I know that's the name of it, but it could be something about that or contraception or, you know, or about like the meaning of life, the beginning of life. Um, there's a lot going on in this one little paragraph. So it says sperm whales signify, signify emotional depths and the connection between your thoughts and your emotional choices. You're being asked to dig a bit deeper into a situation. Also, yeah, I'm, I'm also feeling like you guys are holding your, like your, your heart, um, oh, like your you know that term wearing your heart on your sleeve but I feel like you guys are not wearing your heart anywhere it's just like you're like closing it off not all of you but that was definitely a message for somebody so mutually beneficial venture oh cute it says let me get in there there is an ex there is an extraordinary extra I'm trying to read through the camera I should just read the this happened in the last pile too so there is an extraordinary connection at the forefront of your life at this moment. Utilize this relationship to benefit everyone concerned. Also, um, I find it interesting how these cards are coming together here. And do you notice how they both have like a stream of light? Let me get in here too so you can kind of see it a little bit better. But do you notice how they both have like a stream of light coming at them? There's light, light, like it's darkness and light and darkness and light. It's like spirits trying to show you, right? Go diving to these new depths of yourself is like letting the light come in and then cracking that shit wide open, you know? It's okay. Cry, get it out. That's what the Pisces season is all about, right? It's like, it's emotions. It's very deep, 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 deep emotions. You know, you need to go to the very depths of your soul. Also, it's number two is diving to the new depths, but the mutually beneficial venture is number 31, which is also the number four, which means that you're gaining momentum, right? Like you're, you're getting there fast, but you still can't go from two to 31, right? Like you have to go to the numbers in between. So let's see what this other card has to say. 